Raccoons are mesopredators, which means they're medium-sized animals that will eat almost anything. Larger apex predators, things like cougars, wolves, and black bears, will terrify them. But what we're wondering is what happens when there's no apex predators around to scare them. They never stop eating on these islands with no predators. So they're out day and night in the intertidal, foraging whenever they can with their head down all the time. So we've got this 200 meter section of shoreline where we are effectively like simulating predator presence with these, with these vocalization playbacks. You can see here we've got two computer speakers um, and a small MP3 player in this bottom compartment. If you're a raccoon, that would be terrifying. So if you're scared, you have less time to eat and you spend more time being vigilant or hiding out. Um, and this can lead to lower impacts on your prey. And what we expect to see um, is that raccoons reduce their use of this 200 meter treatment site because we've simulated predator presence and they think it's scary. We can essentially protect the crabs and fish by scaring the raccoons off of sections of beach. I hear the dog barking and I ignore it. And there really is a dog and I'm dead. And we looked at their responses to cougars and bears and they don't pay any heed to cougar and bear playbacks, but they respond to the dog playbacks. Cougars and bears have been gone for a century, and so they've obviously lost their, their sensitivity to those cues. We can assess how much of an effect the raccoons are having on the red rock crabs by going out at just after the low tide and looking for crab kills. So we call it crab scene investigation. And we can identify raccoon killed crabs because they leave the carapace, that's the shell of the crab. It's cracked open, they usually leave bits of flesh, and they leave a pile of appendages, so they're very messy eaters. We've got two sets of um, trail cameras out at each of our treatment sites. The first set is motion sensitive, and they're set uh, along the high shoreline, so we get um, shots of any raccoons that are traveling across the high shore that are sort of set back away from the intertidal. We've got another set of cameras that are um, set to time lapse, and they're focused on the intertidal, so they'll get shots of any raccoons that are actually down on the shoreline foraging. So there's three things that tell us convincingly that these raccoons are fearless. First is that they're out during the day, which you don't see elsewhere. Second is that we see them foraging 100 meters away in the intertidal, far away from cover, far away from the way they could flee from predators. Third is that when we quantify it, they actually spend less than one second out of every minute looking up to see what's around. Fear is a part of life, and it definitely can be good for the environment. And the raccoons in the Gulf Islands, they're eating so many red rock crabs, small fish, and other intertidal organisms that they may be having severe impacts on biodiversity in the islands. We can't necessarily reintroduce cougars to instill fear, so we're looking at other ways to instill fear in these raccoons. This is Wolf Yaren. This is Wolf Anal Gland. 